After Le Mans, we went to Aintree for the 12th British Grand Prix. Thursday practice had been wet and miserable. Moss was quickest with the two Astons, second and third. The rain continued into Friday morning, but by the afternoon, the track began to dry. Dennis Jenkinson of Motorsport, as usual, just quietly watched, taking everything in. The Astons were again to be driven by Carol Shelby and Roy Salvadori. They had not entered the previous Grand Prix at Reims, where the Ferraris of Tony Brook and Phil Hill had finished first and second. Salvadori, aided by Eric Hines, prepared to go out again. I could do with some more padding for this seat, Eric. Sterling Moss was entered in the pale green British Racing Partnership, BRM. Maurice Trentignon drove the Rob Walker end of Cooper Climax. Strike in Italy had prevented the Scuderia Ferrari from travelling and had released Tony Brook to drive for the resurrected Burnwall team in a lightweight version of their classic front-engined car. On Saturday morning, there was a driver's parade in BMC's groundbreaking Frog Eye Sprite. Salvadori led away, followed by his teammate Carol Sheldon. Sterling was hoping for better fortune at Aintree. So far in 1959, he had failed to finish a single Formula One race. Harry Schell was on the front row of the grid. Joe Bonnier, who had won the Dutch Grand Prix at Zandvoort, had qualified 10th. Work BRMs were entered for Shell, Bonnier and Ron Flockhart. Tony Brook had had an unhappy practice in the van wall, which was simply too slow. The works Coopers were driven by Jack Brabham, Maston Gregory and rising star Bruce McLaren. Drivers and spectators alike would have no problem identifying the pale green of Moss's BRM. Aintree's slow corners suited the sweet-handling Astons, and they'd posted competitive times in practice. Salvadori was second, behind poleman Brabham, and Shelby was in sixth. Reg Parnell briefed Shelby and Salvadori, whilst David Brown talked to Earl Howe. two Aston drivers prepared for the 225 miles ahead. Meanwhile, their team manager, Reg Parnell, was asking his old sparring partner, Lofty England, if there was any prospect of Jaguars returning to racing. Harry Shell had a quick word with David Brown. Moss and Joe Bonnier were both driving BRMs. At the start, Jack Brabham, 
leading the world championship by four points from Brooks, took the lead as the pack charged towards Waterway's corner. The opposite locking Brabham immediately opened up a gap. There was a six-car scrap for second place. Salvadori came in, worried as he was getting sprayed with fuel, but this was just the overflow from the Aston's very full tank, and he was sent on his way again. Shortly after, Shelby came in with the same complaint. The good qualifying positions of both Aston Martins had been squandered, and the cars were now well down. Tony Brooks retired the van wall early, with ignition and brake trouble. At least for the next race, he would be back in a Ferrari. Salvadori tried to make up for lost time. Moss was about 15 seconds behind the leader, Brabham. Dori's Maserati had an off and retired soon after. The graceful 250F Maserati, which had been the mainstay of Formula One through the 50s, and which had carried Fangio to his fourth successive world championship in 1957, has by now had its day. A legend in its own lifetime. Salvadori climbed back to sixth place, but Shelby had a dud magneto, which meant his Aston's engine was firing with six plugs instead of twelve, causing a major power loss. Giovanni's BRM retired with a broken throttle linkage. David Brown checked his car's lap time. On lap 50, Moss, whilst running second, ten seconds behind Bradley, was forced to pit for a new left rear tyre. He rejoined the race 15 seconds ahead of third place man Bruce McLaren. Shelby was now dropping further and further behind. Up at the sharp end, Brabham now had a 50 second lead, but Moss was catching, and Brabham was trying to preserve his tyres to avoid another pit stop. Gregory stopped for water. Shelby was now running behind one of the Lotus 16. Shell also had to have his left rear changed. Moss had now pulled back 20 seconds over Brabham. After such an encouraging debut at Silverstone, and here in practice, the Astons were now really struggling against the rear-engined cars. Reliability wasn't their strong suit either. Aston McCann.